So far, I guess it's okay. So far, all we've done is eat. But when are we leaving? Yeah, we just got started. Matter of fact, I think we're getting ready to start the discussion. Man, I still can't believe I'm here. I told you when I helped you move out of your house that you'd owe me one. I'm calling it in now. With a small group Bible study? This is ridiculous, even for you, Ricky. How long have we known each other, Brett? I don't know. 15 years. It's been 18 years, and I consider you my best friend. But you won't listen to me when I talk to you about Jesus. So I thought you'd listen to a whole group of guys talk to you about Jesus. There you go with all that Jesus talk again. I swear, between you and my wife, I'm tired of all this religious stuff. It's not about religion, it's about a relationship. It's funny, it's the same thing she says. I swear, they must give you all script full stuff to say to me just to annoy me. You can't believe it, you finally figured us out. Oh, shut up. Come on, let's find a seat. All right, everybody, let's get started. I'm going to kick things off tonight with uh, one of my famous warm-up questions. Oh, oh, really? Oh, I know how you love them. If you could go back in your past and change anything, what would you change and why? Let's start with you, Ricky. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I'd say after that heartburn yesterday, I probably wouldn't be having chili for lunch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... On a more serious note, you know, I'd probably spent more time with my dad before he died. You know, I was so busy with work and everything, I, I just didn't think I'd lose him so quickly. Thanks for sharing, Ricky. Now, what about you, Brett? That's, that's right, Andy. Yeah, it's Brett. I'm not going to answer you stupid question. That's okay, Ricky. Brett, if you don't mind me asking, what, what's stupid about my question? It's stupid because it doesn't matter. You can't change things once it happens. Sticks with you and you can't get rid of it. In fact, it defines you. So why pretend that you can change it? I understand what you're saying, but you don't have to let your mistakes and failures define you. Man, that's easy for you to say. Look at all this stuff. You've got a nice job, you've got friends. You didn't invite people over for a Bible study. You don't know my reality, you don't know my past failures because you're a good person. That's where you're wrong. I'm not a good person. Fact is, all these blessings I've received from God have all been through His grace. I'm a sinner. Romans 3.23 says we're all sinners. Sin separates us from our Creator. And he doesn't want to be separate from us or have sin define us. He sent Jesus to live a perfect sinless life and to die on the cross for our sins. He took our punishment and rose again on the third day. You have a personal relationship with Jesus. All your sins are forgiven, and you know a true peace and joy. This is clear in John 3:16. God loves you, Brad. Well, that's what you say. Then why do I feel so much pain and misery in my life? I don't think God loves me. Then why did my whole family hate me? God does love us, but sin still has consequences. Not to mention, we live in a fallen, sin-sick world. He didn't make it that way. Sin made it that way. But God loves us anyway, and one day, make all things new. He wants to start with your heart, Brett. <laughs> Give me a break. God couldn't love me. I don't think anybody could love me. In fact, I think everybody hates me. All right. I'm going to suspend the question for right now. We're going to turn to Luke 19. Everybody turn in your Bible. We're going to talk about a man named Zacchaeus. There's your Bible on the table there. Where's the blue? It's in the New Testament. Everybody gets the Bible open. We can get started here. You don't care if you get started, John. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacharias. 